The Denver Broncos have swept the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, we know in football there are moral victories. There's also kind of like what would the equivalent of a uh, of a of a win that feels like a loss be? Whatever that is, that's what we have right here. Because although the Denver Broncos broke yet another streak and we swept the Chargers for the first time in a long time, uh, we're out of the playoffs. And so there is so much to break down, so many angles to look at this. We got a new quarterback at the helm. We have controversy around, are we riding with Russ or are we riding with Peyton? So much to break down. Uh, we got our main man, Nate, to come in and help us break it all down. So, uh, Nate, kicking it over to you, my guy. How are you feeling after the Broncos beat the Chargers? It mixed feelings because the whole game I was feeling really positive and, and uh, until we were officially knocked out of the playoffs. I was feeling really good about it. Um, so I, I have mixed feelings, some positives and some for sure negatives. Yeah, man. It, it was a very bizarre for me. I went to a New Year's Eve party and uh, where we're living now, the Broncos game wasn't on. So I'm watching the Broncos on my phone. And at the same time, I'm watching the Seahawks on TV and the the um, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm like, please, just one of you guys, can you take care of business? And it just felt like all day long, everything, um, even just the, the Patriots, uh, Buffalo Bills. I don't know if you watch that, but it's like the same kicker who kicks a, a walk-off game winner against us last week when he had no business doing it, misses two easy kicks in Buffalo. And if he does that, he wins. And it just felt like um, definitely not um, not our year. But like, let's let's kick it over to the quarterback conversation, Nate. What were your thoughts? Uh, Jarrett Stidham, what were your immediate reactions seeing him play after watching Russ all season, past two seasons? Yeah, and, and on your point real quick before I talk about this quarterback situation, uh, Colts won today, Texans won today, and of course the uh, Steelers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Like It was like – it was a bad day. Yeah. It, was, it was not looking good for us in terms of the help that we needed for the playoffs. But uh, to answer your question, um, overall, pretty positive. At one point in the, in the quarter, I was feeling like I was watching a Brock Osweiler size yeah. – uh, uh, oh, frick, uh, Drew Locke, right? Mm. Like where I felt like I'm watching a guy who who looks like a Brock Osweiler, plays like a Drew Locke, but then as the game went on, I was like, no, he's better than both of those guys. Like, and and the Houston Texans put a crazy amount of money into Brock Osweiler, which was a complete waste, of course. Um, so I'm like, man, maybe maybe this is our guy. I don't know. I don't want to go too deep down that rabbit hole yet because we have a whole video to record here. But go ahead, what do you think about it? Yeah. I <sighs> I'm so mixed because if, if you just look at, I got the numbers right here. We'll throw them up on, on the screen yeah. for y'all, but y yeah, you just look at our box score here and uh, 224 yards in the air. And I think if, if you think about that, like, and you look at Russell's breakdown, um, I think 11 times this year, Russell didn't eclipse the 224 mark. So like he's under game one, he's under the bears, even in these games when he's behind and we're, uh, you know, we're throwing it to catch up. He's under in the bears. He's under with the jets. He's way under with the chiefs way under with the Packers way, way under with the chiefs again, uh, under against Buffalo under against Cleveland. He ties that exact mark, which is super ironic when he plays the, the chargers, he and Stidham threw for the exact same yardage. So it's like, you can't even tell who was better. He was under with Detroit and then he was over, uh, last week with New England, but it, I think the the huge difference is that had we we really had that game in control the entire game, mm -hmm. and I think had that game been if we were down at all, I think we would have easily seen Stidham eclipse the 300 yard passing mark without even yeah. trying. It felt like towards the end there it was <clears throat> run run. You know we're just milk and clock there towards the end at least the the last couple of drives. Um, do you think? Uh, yeah, if you just gunned your head right now, have to choose between Jarrett Stidham or Russell Wilson as your quarterback moving forward, who are you picking, man? Uh, if if it weren't a money question, then I would probably lean toward Russell Wilson because of experience and time. Mm -hmm. uh, but but to your point, like one of the things that drove me crazy but was completely fair throughout the beginning of the, the season, we were losing a bunch of games – and the stats for Russ looked so much better than last season. And on all of sports radio was saying, you know, but he doesn't pass the eye test. And I kind of rolled my head at that or rolled my eyes at that. Cause I'm like, okay, but 
he's playing better, is he not? And mm -hmm. yeah, you're not getting W's, but he is playing better. And isn't that what we need? Don't we want a, a quarterback that's in that top echelon? Um, and watching Stidham tonight, I was like, I totally get the eye test thing. Like there was something about the game that I was like, yeah, you know, you look at the stats and you're like 20 for 32 is good. Not amazing. 224 yards. Good. But again, he didn't get a fourth quarter where he was chasing the game down and it was prevent defense and he's throwing every single play. So, um, so I'm with you there on the yardage. I think 224 is actually pretty, a uh, pretty solid yardage for the type of game that played out. Um, and I feel like, the eye test thing was like really surprising to me. The way he stepped into the pocket was at least like a good touch faster than what Russ is able to do. When he steps into the pocket, there's still a throw available. By the time Russ would step up into the pocket, it was now I got to figure out how to get out of the, how, how, get us into a run play or look for a quick little, little chip throw. So I was really stoked about that. Um, there's some other aspects of the way he threw the ball. I felt like his release was really fast. It just mm. felt that way. I don't know what the exact stats were. They didn't put them up on the screen, but it felt like he was uh, pretty solid, pretty solid. And I love some of the, the way he threw his deep ball yep. was very catchable. Sometimes Russ's deep ball, um, because of how short he was and the angle of the ball, it felt like the ball's landing like this. And this, it really felt like a, it reminded You're me a catching little it in bit stride. of Manning's. Yes. It, it, and what do they call Russell Wilson's long ball? They call it a moon ball because it goes straight up and comes down almost like a punt. That was a, a massive difference, man. And I think this is, as I scroll through Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, this is definitely a, you tend to find what you're looking for thing. If you were team Russ, you were like, well, this is the exact same thing. Like we just did Russ dirty. And if you were team Sean Payton or you didn't like Russ, you're like the offense looked different. And so I guess this is kind of showing me, despite the fact that we've got like a hundred Russell Wilson jerseys floating around my house. Like I'm, I, if I had to choose right now who I want to run my offense, I, it looked different. Uh, Stidham, it made the offense look different to me. I think the other massive difference is like you look same exact yardage. Who is the big game changer who is back in this game for San Diego or sorry, Los Angeles, who made a difference immediately caused three drops right away from Judy for a first down. It's Derwin James. And he is a hard hitting safety who makes receivers question their lives and question their profession. <laughs> you know, like how many Judy dropped a first down. One of our tight ends dropped a pass because he got hit and Russell Wilson didn't have to go against him. He was out in that game. And so I think, 224 yards when you're going against a all pro, uh, like not just a pro bowl, an all pro hard hitting safety. That's different. It's like two is not going to throw for 70 points on us. Now that we have Justin Simmons back, like it's a different defense with Derwin James. And the fact that we easily scored 16. And again, if we didn't destroy the time of possession, we own that game from the jump. I never was worried about it. If it was ever in question, I think you see him really ball out. How did you see, the defense play him differently. Like, did you notice a difference in our running game because of Stidham at the QB spot? Um, I think there were slight differences in the way that um, Jaleel McLaughlin was used. Like in the way that he en engaged him in the first quarter, I was yep. pretty stoked because we were seeing Jaleel, you know, sometimes he has, he struggles to have like a little bit of patience in the run. And um, he's really great when he's out in space. And some of the plays to him just felt, for whatever reason, and I, again, I test kind of deal, where it felt different. It felt like the ball went to him, boom, fast, and he is moving up the sideline. So for those, like, screen plays and stuff, I felt like they were moving a little bit quicker, which I liked. Um, and then I also felt like, you know, I think it was the third quarter that Javante was struggling. Speaking of, uh, of Russell Wilson jersey, jerseys, by the way, um, I and 100,000 other Broncos fans, my closest friends, we don't have Russell Wilson jerseys on. We, we have Javante Williams jerseys. We just dropped the three. I like it. it. They just misprint, right? Yep. Uh, so, no, I, I feel like outside of the third quarter, I think it was that Javante had a couple big mistakes, tackles for losses, mm -hmm. just didn't look like he made the right decision. Um, I felt uh, – I don't feel like it was that different, but it was a little bit different for sure. Uh, it felt really, and again, you tend to find what you want to find, I guess. But to me, it just felt like that we weren't running against eight man boxes and there was space and you, you just could kind of see what Sean Payton is saying like this uh, because of just 
the ability that we have a middle of the field presence. Now the linebackers, when you drop back to throw, have to drop back, which I, it just seemed to open everything up to me. And I know the numbers don't necessarily show that, but I think you you throw Marvin Mims on those deep balls instead of a guy literally we just signed up off the practice squad with Dorsett. If you have Cortland Sutton going deep again instead of um, you know Bandy and and those kind of these guys, we literally are signing off the practice squad. I think this is a much much different offense for sure. Uh, real quick here, just we're kind of hitting up against time for this. Maybe we spill over and do one more quick video with our high low Buffalo. Um, we'll plan on that. So ch- keep checking the channel all week. We'll drop that. But Nate, what do you want to see happen now that the playoffs are off the table? What do you want to see happen next week in Las Vegas? Um, do you want to end with a winning record for the first time since, um, you know, your nephew was even born as you may remember, like seven years ago, we haven't had a winning record, even though that that hurts us right now. We're at the 15th overall draft pick. If the season season were to end today, Whereas if we lose uh, that we could drop up, but we lose, we end the season on another losing record. What do you want to see happen against the Raiders? I want to see a W and that's just how I feel. And I I know some people in Broncos country are going to disagree. I think an eight, there are a lot of eight and eight teams right now. This is a really weird season with teams that are at that 500 level. Um, So yeah, I do see the point that if you lose the game, um, whether it's on purpose or not, sure. I see that, that point of like, you could be at like an eight team swing, you know, if depending on how things yeah. shake up next week. So there's an argument there for sure. But I feel like my perspective, you know, during this game and I, and I you know, we have to you, you bring up your son being born, you know, this this seven years ago when we went through seven post Peyton Manning years struggling to have confidence on the field. Mm. I ne- like if you ask me, and I'm sorry to to be this guy. Like I was, I was really nervous for this game. I was really nervous that all the hype on Stidham was maybe overhype, mm. and that during the game I was gonna feel like I was watching Drew Lock. Where I was like, man, if it's if it's Drew Lock's best performance, we're gonna be a great team, and if it's not, we'll see. And I like you, I felt confidence the whole game long, and it wasn't just because their quarterback sucks he does but it was also because the way we played the game Mm -hmm. felt like everything we've done this season was on the table plus one extra bit that i felt like it looked a little bit quicker and a little bit more uh like from height perspective the middle of the field was more available to the quarterback position so i definitely felt confident all game long that's what i want to go off into the offseason with because i want there to be no excuses for whether or not we start Stidham next year. If we start him next year, I don't want it to be because we're like, well, we couldn't get a better guy in the draft or we couldn't get a better guy in uh, free agency. I want it to be because we're like, no, we have the guy. We watched him and he may not be Brock Purdy yet to your uh, you know, musings the other day, but uh, he could be, man. He could be. He looks pretty solid. Totally, and I think man. having a super high quality coach does make a difference with that sort of situation. Like we'll never know the world in which Drew Brees spent the majority of his career somewhere else, but man, it doesn't hurt to have a great coach. hundred percent, man. And I think I'm right there with you. I, yeah, it helps us maybe jump up a couple spots in the draft. I don't want to have to find a quarterback in the draft. That means that we are a few more years out from being relevant. I want to be relevant next year. I want to be next year's Detroit lions. You even heard Sean Payton talk about that when we were one in five saying, Hey, if we end this season right, there's no reason we can't be next year's Detroit Lions. So that's what I want. I want Stidham to go out and I want him to throw for 350 yards against the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Raiders, we're going to end your season on a loss. You fired your coach. You're going to sell your franchise. Let's get out of there uh, and Broncos country. Let's ride into the offseason on a win. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in. Helps our channel if you like and subscribe. We'll catch you next uh, week as we do a post game for the final game of the year. Nate, I need a new catchphrase. What is it? We can't say let's ride anymore. Wow. You put me on the spot there. Uh, I guess Broncos country. Let's roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't be let's roll. That's terrible. That, that know, was man. bad. Give me some time to think about it. Next All right. Time. Think about it, man. Uh, catch you on the next one.